As an Egyptologist, used to walls covered in hieroglyphs, it's a strange experience visiting a site like Megiddo. The archaeological sites in Israel are very different from those in Egypt. With so few inscriptions here, it's easy to understand why there are major problems with biblical archaeology. As I see it, the really great problem we have with Palestinian archaeology or Holy Land archaeology is the mute character of the monuments. These stones simply don't speak to us. They don't tell us which king built this gateway. Now, if this was an Egyptian monument, it would be covered from top to bottom in hieroglyphs, naming the king, recording particular events in the king's reign. Very easy to date. But here we have no such information. So the interesting thing is, how do they date this monument? Well, ironically enough, they actually use Egyptian objects inscribed with the names of pharaohs to date whole strata here, whole occupation levels, and monuments. So if I'm going to change Egyptian dates, doesn't that mean everything else has to change here? Let's see how this works. Traditionally, Solomon has been placed in the Iron Age, around 970 BC, and Ramesses II in the Late Bronze Age, around 1280 BC, centuries before Solomon's time. When archaeologists dig up a plaque of Ramesses II here in the Holy Land, they use it to date the levels of the ruined city. But I've brought the dates of Ramesses II, and therefore the Bronze Age, right down into the 10th century BC. That means we must search for Solomon's palaces and gateways, not in the Iron Age levels, but in the levels of the prosperous Late Bronze Age. The kingdoms of Israel, particularly that of Solomon, are generally regarded as having occurred in the early part of the Iron Age. Um, David would ask people to regard Solomon in the Late Bronze Age. That is going to be difficult for most traditionalists to accept. But if you look at the biblical account of the Kingdom of Solomon, he is an international figure. The material culture and archaeology of the early Iron Age does not support this cosmopolitan international picture. If you look at Solomon through the lens of the late Bronze Age and look at the archaeology from there, you see an Israel that is really cosmopolitan, really international, and the story or the history of Solomon as we know it better fits the late Bronze Age material culture than it does the early Iron Age. And so I think that is one of David's most persuasive arguments.